Welcome to Restaurant Influencers, presented by Entrepreneur Media and Yelp. My name is Sean Walchef, founder of Cali Barbecue Media. In life, in the restaurant business, and in the creator economy, we learn through lessons and stories. We are very fortunate today to be recording this interview from the Restaurant Transformation Tour in Los Angeles, presented by Restaurant 365. It's so important to find people that are playing the game within the game. That is why we created this show. That is why Toast is our title sponsor. Toast is our primary technology partner. And we are trying to find the best people to help move our restaurant business forward. And today we have a very special guest. Today we have Julian Cervantes, owner of Super Taco Mexican Restaurants in Sacramento. Five locations. Julian, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us. So I've got a, my favorite random question that we start the show off with. Where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? Uh, a Golden One Arena in Sacramento. Golden One be, Arena, yes. beautiful. I've yeah, never been beautiful. there, but I've read about it. I've seen yeah. so much content from there. So we're going to pretend that Golden One Arena, that I convince Entrepreneur, I convince Toast, that we're going to put on another hospitality conference. Or we're going to get Restaurant 365 to put on their <laughs> restaurant transformation, their next tour stop in Northern California. And I'm going to put you right on center court. I'm going to say, Julian, you have two minutes. Two minutes to tell us who is Super Taco Mexican Restaurant. Can uh, you tell us? Two yes, minutes. Super Taco is a family-owned business right out of Sacramento and uh, it's, it's family owned, run by uh, you know my sons and, and my wife and myself, of course. Uh, great food, uh, great service. We try to do our best every time and uh, authentic California style uh, combined with authentic Mexican food. Uh, it's a great place, Fam uh, family oriented. It's great, great place that uh, you want to you wanna visit us. You want to try our food. So, so many people that listen to the show, they're <clears throat> restaurant owners, they're in the hospitality p profession. Can you bring us back to the dream of opening up the restaurant? Yeah, he was, uh, I mean, I was, I, I was a farm worker for, uh, I started when I was very, uh, at a very young age. And uh, I had a dream of uh, having my own business. And I was like, you know, uh, what kind of business should I get into? And but I was looking, so I was like, anything would work. I can make it work, you know. I just uh, I need a shot at having a, my own business. So I seen that a lot of uh, Latinos like myself, uh, 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 families and people were <clears throat> started with restaurants. So I was like, you know, and plus I like food and uh, I love to cook. I love food. So I was like, I think I'm gonna we got I want to start with a Mexican restaurant. So. With the help of my two sisters, uh, Ileana and Maria, they kind of uh, helped. We became partners, and and uh, we started, uh, you know, uh, a restaurant, you know, and uh, that's how it started, you know, and and that's after that it was just history, you know. Just so when you started that business, it's. It's so hard, you know, now that you have five restaurants to yeah. go back and remember how hard it was to open up that first restaurant, you know, and when we think about it, you know, this is for entrepreneur media. So many entrepreneurs, they, they're inspired. They want to get into the food business. But can you bring us back to how difficult was it to open up that first restaurant? Uh, I had no experience. I was 23 years old uh, and I just you know, the dream and the desire, you know, kept me going and I didn't know much. I didn't know where to start, nothing. But uh, I started by looking at a, a empty location. Uh, so I found one available location in Sacramento, uh, close to my house. And uh, it started in South Sac Sacramento on Mac Road. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then I started by there and then I started day by day, you know, getting information on how to open my own restaurant, a family restaurant. And got I went to the local uh, bank and got me a loan, you know, by we kind of use our home as our collateral, our family phone. You went uh, all in. All, all in, in on your yeah. dream. I mean, it was, uh, the, the, just by having the house, the house was a dream. And and we kind of put the my dream home, my family home on the line for a business. But I knew that uh, I felt very good about it. I was like, you know, whatever. I'm not going to lose anything. I'm, uh, I'm not going to lose my house for sure. But uh, I'm going to go all in. But uh, I'm going to give it a good shot. And I think 
we're gonna do we're gonna be okay you know and and uh yeah that's how it started and uh that's how i got plus i had some savings and and then the loan that i got through the house and and uh, uh that's how super taco got me and i started with used equipment used tables it was a deli before i moved into that location and that's how it started it was very hard for three years after my third year i wanted to quit i was like you know this is real hard i mean very little money very little income for everybody and i was probably basically working for free for i don't know how many months but uh so after my third year i was like you know what i'm gonna stop take a break and then maybe get a breather and then keep on going the next year in a year or two and uh but i i say we decided the we had a buyer where I, I was going to sell the business and then uh we me and my wife we made some i added some uh we kind of went back and did some numbers and we're like you know what we're not going to make it with we already had a mortgage uh on top of another mortgage from the original yep. loan so uh so she's me and her like and my wife say we're, we're not going to make it she was my accountant personal accountant slash owner <laughs> <laughs> slash uh you know uh ma cook manager you yep. know so she was playing uh different roles the like family myself business. yes yeah. And then, uh, and then, like you were not going to make it. And good thing the buyer was kind of slow. He kind of moved slow, and so I had it gave me time to think. And I just canceled the. We're like, no, we're going to keep it, and just we're going to do some changes. You know, have fun, relax, and keep on going. You know, yeah. and and that worked. So I would tell everybody if you ever start a business, and you you know you kind of want to give up, just uh, go to Plan B. You know, relax, uh, make some changes for sure and then keep on going. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, you know, one of the most important things about business is to stay in business. Yes. We opened as a breakfast restaurant and we added a sports bar and we added a dinner. We definitely weren't doing barbecue and media when we first opened <laughs> 15 years later. Can you bring us back to opening up that second restaurant? When did you know you were ready for the second restaurant? Uh, it was, uh, yeah, we're like, you know what, we're gonna give it a shot and I think it just came naturally, you know, it came naturally and uh, me, you know, when I started in business, I just wanted to have one, you know, uh, that was my dream or get out of the farm fields, you know, that's, that was kind of, uh, that was my goal. And once I got there, uh, then we for some reason, it started to it's like, Hey, we should try another location. So we tried it and, uh, yeah, that's how uh, it just happened naturally. You know, uh, it was it was weird because you know when you start, you just want one location, but then after that, uh, you kind of you're curious about you know uh, about the second or the third. You know, what year was the first restaurant open? In night, uh, September 29th, uh, 1991. 1981. Yeah, wow. 91. 91. Yeah, okay. I was uh, 23 years old. Amazing. Yeah, 91. no experience. But I kind of used my my sister's experience because uh, they they were already running a restaurant, mm -hmm. managing a restaurant. So they kind of uh, they they were uh, they really helped me a lot, you know, uh, with the uh, getting started. Yeah, thanks to my two sisters, so one which the, they were my partners too. Sorry. So no, no, absolutely. I think it's it's very important, especially when we talk about the restaurant business. Every business is a family business. Yes. So it's a matter of how much the family is involved. Can you bring us back to once you started growing your family? How many restaurants did you have once you had your first son? Uh, it was uh, my first son. We just had one or two and yep. then we had another son uh, uh which is diego he's here with us today and uh, <laughs> he's the youngest yeah he, he's the middle one he's, he's the, middle the middle one, one yeah. yes then we opened another one and like we were having uh, maybe a uh, a restaurant uh, and a baby uh, yes at the same time <laughs> <laughs> so we're like we're just gonna give it a shot you know which it was it's not enough to have a child you have to have another restaurant yes, yes you gotta have <laughs> your, your wife is an incredible woman <laughs> yeah yeah she is she's a superwoman we call her yeah yeah because she's everywhere yeah so can you 
talk about raising children and running restaurants because I think it's very important for, for me. I know I grew up in the restaurant business. My grandfather was Bulgarian. It was very important for him to, for me to learn the value of work. And I hated it when I was young. When I was a teenager, I did not enjoy busting tables and washing dishes. <laughs> But now I understand what he was trying to teach me, the fundamentals of working hard, of hospitality, of caring for people. Yeah. It was the same thing my grandmother taught me. What, what, raising your children, what, what kind of, did you expect them to want to be as excited about the restaurant business as they are now? Yeah, you know, uh, I, 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 I kind of, uh, I try to, not to get them involved too much. Uh, I did, I showed them a little bit, I, they were working, uh, part-time uh, very little uh, when they were on vacation but I try not to uh, uh, get them involved 100 percent you know because I didn't want to burn them out so I give them their space and, and then I think when you have a family wife uh, you have to be very careful you have to uh, don't let the business take over your family and your personal well your personal life or you I mean don't let the business take over the your whole world you know I, I think it's a you never, never do that I think you got to uh, uh, think of uh, having your business no your family first and happiness and kind of third your business uh, if you do the other way around everything's for the business uh, you might not have a family and or uh, uh, you might not have a wife or you might lose your <laughs> wife or your yeah. kids for the business. So you have to leverage that. Uh, that's very important for everybody that wants to start a business. Uh, I mean, you think, I mean, your family, and your wife is first and then the business is second, you know, because uh, <clears throat> that's what I did after my third year. I was like, I relax. I go, OK, well, well, since the beginning, kind of my family was first, but but I was still, we were, me and my wife were working a lot of hours. I was working a lot of hours. My sisters were working a lot of hours. Uh, and, uh, but after a while, I mean, once you get married, you have kids, you have to really uh, think about them a lot. You know, your kids and your wife is their first, you know, and, uh, and then don't get them involved too much because uh, you'll burn them out, yep. you know. I've seen other business uh, business uh, families that had restaurants too, and their kids were there. Like uh, they would go to school and then spend the rest of the day at the business and doing their homework at the business, you know, and uh, helping out in the business. Yeah. And I don't think it's like I'm not going to do that with my family, yeah. you know. And then I, even on weekends, instead of being playing out with their friends and doing fun stuff kid, that kids do. They were there, you know, and yeah. and I was like, I'm not going to do that for my my, my sons and my family. Uh, so uh, after my second year, I was like, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I would work hard, a lot of hours, but uh, I was always thinking about having fun and and enjoying my my wife and my kids first. You know, that was very important. So don't lose track of that because uh, it is bad for the for yourself life and, f and family. Absolutely. Well, you lead by example. And if they choose to want to be there and they yeah. see how you're doing it and now they're inspired to want to be a part of the business, yeah. what does the city of Sacramento mean to you? Having restaurants in Sacramento and, you know, just the, the, the community there. Every The reason why we love this show and this podcast and having the opportunity to work with people and have interview leaders like yourself and influencers like yourself is that no matter where you are on earth, if you're in the restaurant business, you're in an influential business. Yes. You know, the influence that you have on your community, we, we're in the hospitality business, so we have to give back. Can you talk a little bit about Sacramento and what it's meant to you to, well, to grow your business? There? Yeah, Sacramento is everything. You know, it's uh, thanks to Sacramento, you know, Super Taco is, is uh, all the support, the love that we get from Sacramento. We love that city. I mean, that's... Uh, uh, that's how it gave us an opportunity to me and my family, thanks to my customers from Sacramento and the city of Sacramento, that, uh, that you know, we're very lucky to be there. And, and, and thanks to my city that Super Taco is growing, is growing. And thanks to all my, my, my uh, customers, thank you very much for everything. And, and, uh, and, 
you know, as, as we get bigger, uh, we want to, you know, uh, somehow work more with our community and, 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 and just, but sometimes you're so busy, you're, you kind of, uh, but in the future we want to manage our time and, 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 uh, and everything manage better, you know, the business better, our, our time better. That way we can, uh, support and help our community, you know. Have you had more. have you had any mentors, anybody in the restaurant business or another business that have helped you along the way when you were looking for for answers how to grow your business? Uh, not really. No, you know, I, I it was just uh, me and my uh my you know, my two sisters and then my wife came in and and she's great after maybe after the second year she came in and and uh uh, but we, we uh, you know, uh, I would just look up to the, a lot of business, Latin or any kind of business, and, and then just, uh, but I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't have a mentor, just yeah. by hearing and looking at them and admiring them, and, and, uh, uh, and, and, but we didn't have no, no kind of help or mentor. When yeah. I was when I started the business, yeah, yeah, I think it's definitely something. When I when we when I started doing barbecue, thank thankfully I found a mentor to help us do barbecue. But one of the things that I didn't do very well was reaching out to other business leaders and other business owners. I consumed a lot of content, you know, listening to podcasts and reading books and trying to read magazines. Restaurantowner.com. Those are resources that I would lean on to try to find out what are other leaders doing how are they growing their business how are they building a profitable restaurant business because it is difficult yes. it's a very difficult business you know we're running a mini factory and a mini factory with people that are hand making the craft you know the yes. food can you talk about how your menu has evolved and where where you want to see your menu go into the future yeah we started with a small menu and then uh you know and then when i was growing i mean when we started with a bit going back to what you said from the beginning i mean it, it, I couldn't reach out to a lot of people. I mean, a lot of uh, for help because I was just too. I mean, it was uh, it was a new uh, career. I mean, a new business. So I was there. I mean, uh, all day. You know, working 10, 12, 12 hours a day, uh, long hours. So I didn't really give me a lot of time to go around and 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 then you know talk to people and I, I th which I think what you did was great. You know, go around and try to get a mentor and get information and get some help. Mm -hmm. and, and and I needed the help, but I mean, I was just too involved in running the business. You know, and uh, so our, our menu is. You know, we started with a uh, going back to the menu. Uh, we started with a, a menu, and then I started putting my my uh, my own personal touch. Uh, I started. You know, I'm a fan of food and. Uh, uh, just love Mexican food and well, uh, all food in general, <laughs> you know. But uh, but but and then so I I started with a menu and then I, uh, I I I started putting my personal touch, you know, you know, on, on everything we did. I, I put my changing things, adding things, adding my favorite items, and, and uh, so basically our our menu is our kind of our favorite foods, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So, so can you, we, it, it's so hard in this business because we can't do this business without people. You know, we're so yes. fortunate that we have an incredible team. Yes. I've got an incredible team at Cali Barbecue. I've got I an agree. incredible media team. Yeah. Um, but we give so much to not only our team, but to our village, to our community. Very rarely do we take care of ourselves. We talk about burning the candle on both ends, working a double, clopening, yeah. working seven days a week, you know, where we, yes. it's very hard as leaders to remove ourselves from working in the business as opposed to working on the business. Yes. Is there anything that you've learned along the way that you would tell your younger self, hey, Julian, stop doing that, you know, don't work so many hours, find somebody, hire somebody, what would you tell yourself? Yeah, I would exactly, you know, be more patient, uh, uh, you know, uh, have some uh, work on your schedule where it's not as long, that way you can uh, see the business from outside, you know, because if you just work so many hours, uh, you are spend so many hours inside, uh, you can't really see the outside of the business, so, no. so yeah, you have to really, uh, uh, 
have a the smart schedule try to and that way you can get some help uh give support get information to make it and, and then you know uh but you know thanks to our employees and work our team which uh, i don't really call them employees i call them you know my family and my team yeah. teammates uh uh thanks to them i mean uh i mean they're uh Without them, we can't really grow or do anything. So, we we love them, we support them, and and, and uh, uh, so yeah, it's very important to have a, like a family atmosphere, you know, in in the workplace. Yeah. So when you when you think about what Super Taco Mexican Restaurants is going to be five years from now, ten years from now, what do you envision? Uh, you know, I think uh, uh, you know, uh, I think we're gonna Super Taco is gonna have different models of of, of uh, uh, of uh, types of business, we kind of wanted to have maybe two, three m menus offered to our uh, great customers, and, uh, and 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 you know really do some changes, do you know uh, come up with new things, new models, you know like uh, different types of foods, a little bit change our menu a little bit around, and but keep our original taste and maybe keep our. Uh, have one model that is just what it is since the beginning. Don't change that. Just add in another menu maybe yeah. in the future and maybe add in more stores, maybe working in different states, uh, uh, especially where it's kind of business friendly. I mean, that's, I mean, I hate to say it, but I mean, it's, uh, you have to look for places where it's, uh, I love California. It's a great, you know, love. And we, we want to grow more in California, but uh, at the same time, we want to, tried other areas, cities and states so we can just spread our love and our our, our flavors and and uh, uh what do you call it uh, uh just introduce our flavors and our style of food to other places you know yeah in, in the future so it's great yeah so one of the things that we do every single week people that listen to this show we put on a clubhouse call on Wednesdays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, Clubhouse is an audio app, but it's a way for us to build community, people that listen to the show, they can come on stage, they can share their story. And one of the things we like to do is shout people out, um, do a social shout out. So if you follow us at Cali Barbecue Media or you follow me at Sean P. Walchef, um, we want to be a resource to you so that we can help find solutions like toast like pop menu like restaurant 365 uh, we're so fortunate to be at a place where we get to have the best of the best and i was very fortunate to get invited to go to national restaurant association to speak at the chicago um, restaurant show about restaurant technology and at that show uh, diego diego who's here diego who's your son yes. um, he came up to me after my presentation and he came up to me and he asked, um, he was with your with your other son, yes, with your wife. Oldest. I got to meet the entire family, but w what we say on this show and what we say in those clubhouse rooms is to stay curious, to get involved and to ask for help. So there's never been a time where you can have a resource where you can connect with other restaurant owners. Also, I'm in Southern California, you're in Northern California, we met yes. in Chicago, but it's so important to do the work and it's so important to ask for help. So I wanna give a shout out to Diego for, for taking the initiative and we hope that you listening to the show that you join us on Clubhouse every Wednesday, every Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, Super Taco Mexican Restaurant. Can you, is there anybody that within your organization, somebody that you haven't been able to say thank you to that you'd like to take the opportunity to say thank you to? Well, thank you to, you know, uh, the city of Sacramento, thank you to my customers. Thank you for my team that, you know, with you guys, I mean, Super Taco can't, you know, uh, can't move forward or uh, thank you for, you know, to my family, my my wife, beautiful wife and uh, my Diego, Julian and Danny. Thanks to my sons, I got three sons that, you know, support us and they're with a the company and they, they love Super Taco. And I just wanna, and, and thank you, Sean, for, given us this opportunity and uh, to be here you know thank you and I appreciate uh, I think you're I admire you and and uh, and, and we really uh, you know uh, we like you a lot you know appreciate because that. like you know what you're doing I think is great and and uh, I mean we were impressed with you uh, and your show thank you. since the beginning so uh, we want to 
Super Talk want to thank you for your support and for your love. That it's uh, awesome. You know, yeah. we, uh, I think you, you're one of our, uh, you know, people we really admire. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm a yeah. super fan of Super yeah. Taco. Super yeah. fan of Super Taco. Cali, Cali Barbecue, you know, <laughs> number one. <laughs> we appreciate that. But, yeah, I mean, you. the most important thing is that because of the internet, because of entrepreneur, because of podcasting, because of YouTube, no matter where you find the show, you're part of the family, and we all are trying to figure this thing out. We by no means are experts, but we're trying to figure out social media, we're trying to figure out websites, we're trying to figure out point of sale, we're trying to lean on our partners like Toast, like Pop Menu, we're here at Restaurant 365, so wherever, however we can get this information to you to make your restaurant business so that you can better serve your community. That's what we're here to do. So yes. thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. We're going to put links to Super Taco. Please follow them on Instagram. I've already given um, Diego homework. So Diego has to create their TikTok channel. And anybody that's listening, if you're not on TikTok, please get on TikTok. Um, you can follow me, Sean P. Walchef. I will follow you back on TikTok. I'll follow you on Instagram. You're part of the family. Thank you for listening to the show. And uh, Julian, thank you so much for your leadership and uh, thank you for spending some time with us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Absolutely. We'll, we'll see, we'll see you all you very next much. week. Thank you. And a special thank you to our title sponsor, Toast. Toast is the primary technology partner that we use at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. It is also the primary technology partner that so many of the guests have shared with us on this show. People like Sam, the cooking guy, Stacy Poonkinney, Jeff Alexander. So many times the guests tell us that they're using Toast when we didn't even know that going into the interview. That is why we are so grateful that they sponsor this show. We want you to win. You that listen to this show, we want you to improve your digital hospitality. Toast is built for restaurants and it's built for you. Toast is the restaurant first platform that's built for your needs, whatever your size, concept, or ambitions. Improve your bottom line with a customizable platform that's easy to learn, use, and grow with. And it meets you where you are with all the right tools for your price point. If you have any questions about Toast, please DM me at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. I will get you the link to the right Toast contact in your market. It's so important that if you listen to this show, that you win. We want you to be on this show eventually. Let us know that you heard the show, you heard about Toast, you implemented Toast, you did a Toast unboxing in your restaurant. Talk to us about how you've impacted your village, your city, your community. Share your Toast story with us. DM me today to learn more. And be sure to check out Toast.